Yes, love is real. Real in my soul. Yes, God is real. For he has won and made me whole. Love for me, just like we go. Yes, God is real. real. My, my, my. Oh, oh, yes, God is real. God is real, for he has watched and made me whole. I don't hear nobody. Oh, good afternoon. I, I just want to welcome you to the program once again. Um, we are the Ministry of Reconciliation, and this is the Spiritual Insight Show. We're so excited that you're here with us today, and I believe that if you stay with us, that you'll be blessed. And so we're going to pray in, and I'm going to have Matrisa, who is my uh, natural sister, biological, I should say, as well as my sister in Christ. Matrisa? Amen. Hi, I'm Matrisa. I'm part of the Ministry of Reconciliation, and I will pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, um, we come before you today, Lord, as well in vessels. Yes. Oh, God, to be used for your glory's sake, Lord. Your glory. Father, I ask the ministry of the Holy Spirit to fill this atmosphere, oh, God, today. Yes. The ministry of the Holy Spirit, oh, guide us and lead us into truth and righteousness and holiness, Lord. Oh, God, be the very words in our mouth today as, as we go forth on this service, Lord. Um, ask that you minister to the people. Oh, Lord, oh God, that you open their spiritual ears, oh God, to be able to hear, oh God, the word that you have for them, Lord. Oh God, oh God, uh, we are just so thankful, Lord, to even be here. Amen. Oh God, we submit and commit unto you today, Lord. Yes. Oh God, I deliver and sacrifice, Lord, holy and acceptable unto you, Lord, oh God. Father, we are not worthy, but we are thankful. Oh God, we are so thankful that you chose us. Oh, God, for such a time as this, Amen. Lord, oh, God, to be used, Lord. And so I just give you glory, Lord. I just give you praise, and I just thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 So we're, we're excited. You know, prayer changes things, and, and prayer gives us access into his kingdom, into his presence. So we're thankful for that prayer. Uh, we want to go into some word, okay? We know that our theme is always and always will be that there remaineth a, a rest for the people of God. And that's in Hebrews uh, 4, 8, and 9. Now, we know, I've said it and I'm repeating myself, that the rest does not come by way of Jesus, okay? Salvation does come, but not the resting. The resting comes in intimacy. Not, not only intimacy, we know we have to read the Word, we understand that, we know we have to pray, but God wants us to get into that intimate place with him where he's able to reveal himself. And so there yet remaineth the rest for the people of God. God wants to bring us into that rest, especially because of the times that we live in. I like repeating myself because people often, more than not, don't get it the first time, nor the second, nor the third. But, you know, the Holy Spirit speaks and, and one day, you know, we say it and you're like, I got it. I got it, sister. I got it. You know, and it's just an exciting time. So, um, but anyways, let's look at Colossians. Okay. I'm going to go to Colossians and I'm going to start at verse four. Now this is Paul and he is Paul and brother Timothy is talking to the Colossians church. And he says, when, since we heard of your faith, okay, in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all saints. This is why he's writing to them because he's heard of their faith in Jesus Christ. He's heard of the love which they have for all the saints. Okay, so he's writing a letter of encouragement. Okay, now if we look at verse nine, it says, for this cause we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you. So he hears, you know, um, uh, uh, of their faith 
He hears of their love. So he begins to pray for them, you know, to encourage them. You see? So, and, and, and to desire that you might be filled. Now, this is what he's doing. He's praying, okay? And he desires that they might be filled with the knowledge of his will, which is the Lord, um, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Okay, so now they have the love of God. They have the faith in Jesus Christ. Now he wants them to be filled with the knowledge of God and the wisdom of God and have spiritual understanding. Now, this is where intimacy is very valuable. Amen. You know, being able to withdraw and get into that intimacy. This is where it becomes very important. You know, if you want the knowledge of God, if you want the wisdom of God, if you want God to reveal himself to you, if you want him to speak to you, then this is where intimacy becomes very, very important. Okay. And it goes on to say in verse 10 that ye might walk worthy. This is what he desires. Okay. We're praying for you aggressively that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being Amen. fruitful in every good work. Okay. He wants all of the work that you put your hands to do for the Lord to be able to flourish and to be fruitful and begin to multiply. Okay. And increasing in what? The knowledge of God. So, increasing in the knowledge of God, okay? So there's always more. He wants us to increase in the knowledge of God. Now, that's why in Hebrews, um, um, Hebrews 4, 8, and 9, it says it didn't happen when you got born again, okay? That's not when this thing happened, but there's more. There's more for you to know. And really, it's a revelation of who God is, OK, and the more you get intimate with him, the more the Lord will begin to reveal what he has given you in Christ Jesus. But intimacy is so valuable. And this I believe the church is missing, you know, because we're here and there. We don't spend enough time. We don't realize the value of the word of God. We don't realize the value of sitting quietly in his presence and allowing him access to minister to our needs. But it's all about the knowledge of God. It's all about the revelation of God. It's all about the wisdom of God. It's all about understanding who you are in Christ Jesus, okay? But a verse 11 says, strengthen with all might according to his glorious power, okay? Unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Now, when we talk about according to his glorious power, we're talking about that abiding life. Amen. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be given you. There is this abiding life and there again, this is where that intimacy comes in at recognizing that need to abide. That's what when we talk about abiding. That's what we're talking about. Amen. We're talking about that intimacy with the Holy Spirit of God that has come to indwell you and to quicken your mortal body and to influence your new man, you know, Amen. that you have in Christ Jesus when you are born again. The Holy Spirit comes to quicken that new man, you understand, to gird you up. Okay, but it has all to do, again, intimacy, that abiding life, that oneness, that union. And that's why I've said this uh, before as well. That's why he likens it unto a relationship between a man and a woman. This is why he talks about us being the bride of Christ. Amen? Amen. So um, let's look at Philippians 4, 6, and 7. This is very important, okay? So he says, be careful of uh, four and, and verse six, it says, Philippians, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplications with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto Amen. God. Now, verse seven, and the peace of God. Amen. You see, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about peace. We're talking Amen. about resting in him and the peace of God, which passes all understanding. It goes beyond our ability to understand it. That's the peace of God. It goes beyond just your, um, your natural peace. It's a peace that surpasses all understanding. And what will that peace do? 
It shall keep your hearts and your minds through Jesus Christ our Lord. So again, that intimacy will bring us into that place of what? Peace. And, and you know what? We need peace. We need peace. I tell you, that's one thing we can all use today. There's chaos all around us, but God has made provision for us by way of his Holy Spirit, by way of intimacy, by way of spending that time with him to come into that place of peace. Okay. And listen, I'll be honest with you. I can't say that I'm where I need <coughs> to be in that place of peace and resting in God. Yes. But there is a, we have to labor. I have to labor. We all have to labor. It's something that you've got to labor to do. The scripture says we labor to enter into that rest. I think that's Hebrews 4, 9 or 8, but it's 9. <coughs> we have to labor. No, that might be wrong. So, you know, don't quote me on that. But we have to labor to enter into that rest. So there is something that you, you have to do, and yet, you don't have to do it because it's already been done. But your labor is the worship. Your labor is being able to enter into that, that time with him, that intimacy with him, that, you know, that reading the word of God, you know, meditating on his word, you know, like drawing close to him and allowing him access, you know, to minister to you and your needs. But that's the way that goes. I'm telling you, and it's a wonderful thing. Amen. You know, it doesn't matter how cha chaotic it, it is. You just have to learn to withdraw yourself and get into that place and depend upon the Holy Spirit to minister to your situation and to minister to that need. But I'm going to give you one more scripture today, okay? And that's probably going to be it. Or maybe I'll try to squeeze two in. <laughs> if you have time or two. But um, Exodus Amen. 34, 14. Um, we want to give our time for worship, you know, and it's, it's such a short time, okay? But we're going to try to get as much in as we possibly can. Exodus 34, uh, verse 14. And now I'm tr trying to get here, trying to get here. It seems like the faster I try to go, the slower it is. <laughs> That's the way I am. I do better just kind of relaxing, trying to go there slow, and I get there faster. But um, Exodus 34, 14 says, For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. God is jealous over us, you know, as his bride. You know, not in a bad way, but he's jealous of us. You know, like he doesn't want us in a relationship with any other God, okay? And, and, and a God can be money. It can be other people. It could be your job. It could be your spouse. It could be many things. It could be, um, you know, your successes in life. They can become your God and they can mean more to you than God does. And he is jealous and he is saddened by that, you know, because he wants you for his own. Now, I will tell you this. Um, I feel like God loves me best of all. Okay? Me too. Now, Matrisa Amen. feels the same way. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? You feel like he loves I you do. best of all. Absolutely. Well, how in the world? Can he love up on me and be loving up on you at the same time? Because he's God. Because he is God. Amen. And he can make all of us feel that way. Amen. Okay, he can make me feel that way. Like, you know, he loves me best of all. He can make Matrisa feel like he loves her best of all. Amen. And he can make you feel like uh, he loves you best of all. Best okay? Of all. So right now we're just going to go in a time of worship. And listen, stay tuned with us, please. You're please. Because it's the high call. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to my son, who is named after my father, James Allen Driscoll. That's his name. We call him Jamie. So come on, Jamie. It's all yours. You. 
Father, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing yes, Lord, God. that you visit us with your holy presence. Yes, Lord. And we're able to <coughs> draw near to you. <coughs> and so we give the glory to you. Glory today, Lord. And so we're just going to go into a time of prayer. Yes, and Lord. We want to pray for you. And those of you who are out there that, that need just yes. a touch of the Holy Spirit, we're asking that you just join it with us. Just, just close your eyes and just... Just look to your, your Father, your Savior. He loves you so yes. much. His desire is to meet you right there. There's nowhere that he is not. And so we're just going to pray at this time, and I pray that you join us. Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, I 
ask that you just minister, Lord. <clears throat> minister the hearts, little God, and look upon needs, Lord, and draw by your power of the Holy Spirit of God unto salvation, Lord, and unto deliverance, Lord, oh God. Oh, Father, speak a word of truth, oh God, into hearts, a little God. I am with you right now. And there's nowhere that I am not. I am with you right now. I understand your pain and your suffering. I understand. I understand. I am a place of peace, a place of resting. I bid you come. I understand. I understand. I have not left you, nor will I forsake you. No, I will not leave you. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I understand. I understand, and I'm calling you unto myself. For that place of intimacy. That place of oneness. That place of abiding, this abiding life. This abiding life. I'm calling you. I'm calling you. I'm calling you, 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 oh, you, 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 So I acknowledge your aching heart. I acknowledge your pain and your suffering. I acknowledge you. I acknowledge you. Oh, I love you. Know that I love you. And I am calling you. I'm calling you. I'm calling you. Seek, seek, seek me. Seek me. Seek me. Seek me. It is a time where you must seek me like you've not sought me before. It is a time that you must seek me like you've not sought me before. And you will see, you will know that I have not left nor have I forsaken you ever, ever, ever. I love you. I love you. I love you. Know this. And I am nigh unto you. Even in your mouth. Even in your mouth. Oh. <clears throat> Isn't our God good? Amen. Yes, he is. Always, always there, you know, to minister to his people. God loves you. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter how difficult things might be. He is a God that has come through Calvary, through the cross, through the shedding of his blood, you know, and so that you might have life and have life more abundantly, so that you might be delivered from this world and, 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 and its evil devices and assignments and Satan and his satanic manipulation. But you have a place of refuge and you're able to come to that place Okay, so I want you to know that today, and I want to thank you for um, stay tuning. You know, um, I just want to thank you for that because you don't have to, you know. Um, and so this is for you, though. You know, it's, it, it, it blesses us to be able to bless you, but God wants to bless you. It doesn't matter how I feel when I come on; God comes for you. You know, because he loves you and he's concerned about you and whatever you're going through. 
whatever you're going through, he loves you. And just know that, you know, you're, you're not waiting for God to act in your behalf, no matter what your situation. You're not waiting for him to act in your behalf. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. Amen. That makes sense. Makes sense, Matrice. Is there anything you want to say? <clears throat> no, there's nothing I want to say. God waited for me and I came. He's on time. He's an on time God. Yeah. And he loves you. Amen. So God bless and we will see you next week. Amen. See you then. Bye-bye. We, the Ministry of Reconciliation, presents to you the Spiritual Awakening Insights Show. It's a time of intimacy with our Creator, a time of deep passion and longing for Him, a time of oneness and abiding in His love, a time of laying aside the cares of this life, the disappointments, the suffering, the pain, the unbelief, and coming to Him, allowing Him access to our hearts. We recognize that He is our habitation, a place of fullness, a, a, a place of, a, of safety, a, a place of awareness of our true self, it's an awakening, it's an enlightenment, a, 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 a just a sense of, of, of our Father and His heart cry for, for us, His beloved, drawing His beloved into His chambers of love and satisfaction, drawing His beloved into a place of resting. There is yet a rest for the people of God. And I say, come, come, come into this place of rest, a place that can only be found in intimacy with our Father, God, He is our beloved.